Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Virkur from Mumbai, India. This is part 2 of my long e-lecture on detection of genetic fetal abnormalities. For better understanding, I have subdivided this part into part 2A where I will be talking about various screening tests for detection of fetal aneuploidies which is this part and part 2B where I will focus on role of ultrasound for detection of fetal anomalies to understand the topic better please watch part 1 before watching this part the links to the other parts will be given in the description box below now i will turn my attention to the topic proper that is screening test for aneuploidy detection as usual first some basics i will illustrate the important terminology used in this topic detection rate is the ability of a test to give a positive result in individuals who have the condition being screened for screen positive rate is the proportion of affected and unaffected individuals yielding a positive result screen positive results are not that important from the clinical point of view false positive rate is the proportion of unaffected individuals yielding positive result during diagnostic test performed later there are two types of markers those detected by biochemical tests called biochemical markers and those diagnosed on ultrasound called ultrasound markers following biochemical markers are used as screening tests for detection of autosomal aneuploidies they can also be used for screening in twin pregnancy but not in higher order multiple birth like triplets etc because the false positive rates are very high these are serum free beta hcg alpha fetoprotein unconjugated estriol inhibin a and pap a in the evolution of these screening tests for aneuploidy detection more and more biochemical markers were added in order to increase the detection rate the first test introduced was the double test two markers were used free beta hcg and alpha fetoprotein in the three syndromes beta hcg is high whereas alpha fetoprotein is low the test has a detection rate of only 60 to 65% and a false positive rate of around 5% remember all the serum screening tests are done in the second trimester and not in the first trimester the next test introduced was the triple marker screen test where besides beta hcg and alpha beta protein one more marker was added and that is unconjugated estriol level in autosomal aneuploidies unconjugated estriol is low this improved the detection rate to 70% while the false positive rate remained the same the quadruple test which is done between 15 to 20 weeks of gestation involves testing four markers free beta hcg alpha ketoprotein, protein unconjugated estriol and inhibin a the way to remember which markers increase and which decrease is remember a and b increase that is free beta hcg increases and inhibin a increases whereas unconjugated estriol and alpha ketoprotein fall this test has a detection rate of 75% and a false positive rate of 5%. It can also be used as a screening test for neural tube defects. The detection rate for spina bifida is around 80%. Another trick to remember the detection rate percentages for the various tests which I have mentioned earlier is remember with each marker added the detection rate increases by 5%. There is another test which is done in the first trimester that is between 11 to 13 week called the combined test markers measured in this test are maternal age free beta hcg nuchal translucency by ultrasound and pap a levels it has a detection rate of around 90% percent. 
which is pretty high compared to the previous test and a false positive rate of 5% which is the same as other tests. Since it involves measurement of only two biochemical markers, it is also called dual marker test. A test commonly used in actual practice is the integrated test. Integrate the first trimester PAP-A free beta ICG and anti analyte screening followed by a second trimester quad screen and receive a single screen test result. The detection rate of this integrated test is 90 to 94% and a false positive rate of 5%. Limitation includes the withholding of first trimester screening test results until the second trimester result, which delays the management option. There is a work around this stepwise sequential model. This approach involves reporting the patient's first trimester screening test risk, which allows for earlier management options. If first trimester test result is higher than the lab-derived positive screening cutoff, we can offer them the diagnostic test or NIPT and the screening protocol is discontinued. If the patient has a low risk, patient can be counseled and one can proceed to quad screening in the second trimester. This sequential screening has a detection rate of 91 to 93% with a false positive screening test result rate of 4 to 5%. A combination of combined tests that involves maternal age, nuchal translucency, and the dual biochemical markers PAP-A and free beta ICG, along with other soft markers like nasal bone, tricuspid flow, or ductus venosus flow, is called the combined first trimester screening test. It has the highest detection rate of 95% and a false positive rate of 2.5% which is the lowest of all the various tests. Maternal age is an important risk factor for Down syndrome. This is called the background risk. As shown in this graph, risk for Down syndrome increases with maternal age. As you can see, there is a sharp increase after the age of 35 years. The cutoff age for screening pregnant women was changed from 40 years in the past to 35 years at present. Having said this, please note that most babies with Down syndrome are born to mothers less than 35 years because more women are having babies at age less than 35 years. Likewise, besides maternal age, there are additional factors that can be used in calculating the test results. These are history, ethnicity, smoking, diabetes, maternal weight, and gestational age. Let me summarize trimester-wise various current screening options available for screening of trisomy 21 and other aneuploidies and their detection rates. The table here illustrates these beautifully. The detection rate for maternal age is 30% which is unacceptable. Hence, we require other tests to confirm this as shown in the table. Although the integrated test has the highest detection rate, it has one flaw. The clinician has to wait several weeks from the first draw of blood at 15 weeks to get the final result which is at 20 weeks. Fortunately, all these tests have a false positive rate of 5% which is easy for us to remember. The reference for the various detection rates is given below the table. This is perhaps the most important slide of my talk and you must memorize it, especially the MRCOG students. After performing the tests and knowing the results, one needs to know what is the cutoff risk above which invasive testing such as coronavirus sampling or 
amniocentesis should be offered. It has been traditional to consider an individual as being at high risk for fetal Down syndrome or other syndromes when the risk of aneuploidy is 1 in 270 or greater, which is the mid-second trimester prevalence of a 35-year-old woman. New cutoff risk values for Down syndrome are as follows. High risk if the risk is up to 1 in 250, borderline between 251 and 1000, and less risk if the risk value is 1 in 1001 or greater. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook or Meta, Blogspot and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.